Hey, morning. This morning we're up at Fremont here, and you know what, when we start our day off all the time, we like to get quality bait. We're gonna be doing some crappie fishing today. We're gonna see if there's any walleyes in the river yet, but hey, we're up here at Moz Bait and with Dan, the owner, and Dan, you know what, it really is, you know, we love coming here because the main thing is, you're open every day at six o'clock, seven days a week, which is very important. So, you know, when you go to a bait shop, you want a bait shop that's always open. So we always like to get on the water early, and we were here at six o'clock, and he was here. You know, and the main thing is we want quality bait. And, you know, that's one thing when we come in here, you really have great bait. And what do we have here this morning? We've got what? A small fat heads here, yep. some large fat heads, small golden shiners. Have some red tailed chubs down there. Okay. And some suckers and chubs down on the end. Okay, and eventually you will have emerald shiners because you know in another probably in another couple weeks here, I'm sure the walleyes will be thick in the river as soon as we get a little bit more rain and it cools down a little bit more. So I think this morning, Dan, what we would like is we'll take a couple dozen of the, the, the fat heads, the small fat heads, and a couple dozen of the shiners. That's Griffin. The Russian. We have a Russian in the bait shop. Who needs a pit bull when you have the Russian right there? Isn't that something to watch, Cat? So don't even think about breaking into this place. Thanks, Dan. Thank you. Good luck. Yep. Hey, it's time to go fishing. Let's go. It's getting light. is we actually got here real early and uh, we're meeting our clients at uh, 8 o'clock this morning but I always like to get on the water early and uh, we're gonna hit a couple of spots and what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off with some plastics got all our kale and stuff here and uh, let's see what we can do here here we go <laughs> I got that one right through the weeds himself you know in that's a that's a pretty decent crappie right there. You know, I, I, anytime people are, are asking me, you know, how big are the crappies? 12, 14, 15, 16 inches? I myself like anything, even, you know, it's kind of funny, I just got an email from a guy talking about the Winnebago system and talking about perch. Everybody wants to catch these big belly female perch, and really, when you skin them perch out, there's nothing on them. So I'm always for taking the males and letting the big females go, but when it comes to eating crappies, that one right there is probably 10, 10 and a half inches. That's a perfect size if you're gonna keep a fish to eat right there. Let the big 12, 14 inches go, and, uh, We'll always have plenty of fish. You know, some about fishing is, and today you're gonna see is that fishing is built basically, it's a great way to spend time with your family and build memories. In in about a half hour, 45 minutes, we're gonna go pick our clients up today and we've got the Van Gilners. And Dr. Van Gilner, old doc, is 92 years old. Johnny is in his 50s and young John is just a, about 12, 13, 14 years old. So it's neat to see the different generations and the things that they like to do, and they're building memories. You know, they're never gonna forget the time that they spend with their dad and their grandfather. That's a, the main thing I love about fishing is that it's something you never get sick of doing, and it is such a, a it builds values, good family values. <laughs> you know, I love when you get to a spot and uh, you know right away that these fish are going to be stacked up down there. And again, the key to this crappie fishing always is, I can't stress it enough, is that when, like right now, we're in about nine feet of water, and I'm catching these fish only, it took about maybe 10 minutes to let it cool down because I came in here with the boat and bumped it a little bit. I try to come into these snags as quiet as I can, but sometimes you are going to bump them a little bit, and it will spook them for a little bit. And I'd say probably, like I said, about 10 minutes, but I came in here and right now I'm only fishing about two and a half feet down, that's it. So these fish are stacked right there. And I know that, you know, I'm in nine feet of water, so I know that there's fish layered almost all the way down. One thing I've always learned about, especially fishing up on the Wolf River, I know when the spot is pretty much done is when you start getting down towards the bottom and you start catching rock bass, it's time to pull everything up and get out of there and go to a new spot. And most of the time, you know, that's the nice part about this system is you got 
a lot, a lot of river here, and it's an incredible system. So if what you're doing is you're just jumping from spot to spot to spot. You know, with plastics, you got to jig it a lot more. You got to be able to keep that plastic moving. So you, I don't stall it very long, you know, a split second, jig it, jig it, stall it for a second, jig it, jig it, stall it for a second. With a minnow, you know, especially in the current like this, I'll put it down there and I'll jig it just a little bit and I'll let it sit there because obviously that's alive and it's moving. Oh, there was one. It's moving all the time. So it's different presentation for sure when you're using plastics, a lot more aggressive. And you know, one thing about crappies too, you gotta remember, is they always push the bait up. So as soon as you feel that little bit of pressure, right away I start lifting a little bit and then when I feel it, then I set the hook. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I tell you, you know something? This is getting pretty repetitious right here. I'm gonna keep that one. Here we go. <laughs> oh, look at that. Now that, that my friends is an absolutely awesome crappie right there. Now that's about as big as you want to keep them right there. That's probably about, about a 12 incher. And I tell you, these these crappie kalins are absolutely awesome baits. And if you can see how that bait moves through the water, it's got a very unique action with these little paddles on the back of it right there. And I'll tell you, so far it is kicking some royal hiney right there. So awesome. Oh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> I love this stuff. Now see, now this one's a little bit too small right here. I mean, that's probably only about a seven, eight incher. Now again, here's another key thing about when you're crappie fishing, never take this crappie and just throw it right back into where you just caught him. What's gonna happen, he's gonna go back down there, he's gonna sit there and shake and shake, and you actually will scare a lot of the other fish. So what I do is just take him to the side of the boat, throw him out in the current a little bit, he'll be fine, Boom, away he goes. You know, I've always, and I've said this all the time, is that little things that you do in fishing make such a huge difference. So it's something to always remember. The small things about not dropping all the way down on the bottom and pulling, pulling the bottom fish up through the rest of the school. When you catch a small one, throw it out to the outside of the boat. Don't throw it right back into where you're catching them. These will help you catch more fish, believe me. Here we go. You know, I have to admit, you guys, I went about 15 minutes without catching one on the kalins, and that's what I do a lot of times when I pull onto these spots. Right away, I always go to the plastics like the kalins, and then what I do is that once things slow down, I go to the minnows and see how many more I can catch. And boy, it took me about 10 minutes, and I finally caught one more out of there. See, we've caught probably, what, eight, nine off this spot pretty much burnt it out. Now it's time to move on to the next spot. But before that, it's time to go get the clients. Hey, our special guests this week, and I'm telling you, are very special. They've been fishing with me for a long, long time, almost 20 years. This is Doc Van Gilner, and we got John Van Gilner and Jenny Van Gilner. Yep, and I'll tell you, we are definitely gonna go out and catch a bunch of crappies this afternoon, big time out here. So it's a great day up on the Wolf River, and the crappies are definitely starting to migrate up out of the system, and the river is loaded. Let's go see what happens. All right, oh yeah. That's the problem with using a long rod like this. Long arm? Yeah, long arm, yeah. <laughs> hey, hey. You know what I should have brought? I should have brought my tree trimmer here. <laughs> Crappy. Crappy for me. Here we go. Oh, that's a nice one. Oh, this is a real nice one. Oh my, oh my gosh! Look at the size of that crappie. Hey, you better get a ladder out here and cut that branch down. I'll tell you that. That's an absolutely slob right there. That is no doubt is about as big as you want to keep them for sure. Boy, that's big fish. Hey, come up, come up, come up, swing my way. 
Swing Jay's on the board. Yeah, Jay. 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 Professional fish. All right. He did better than I did. I was in the trees all the time with that only. rod. He fishes only for money. Only for money. I like that idea. Fishing for money. Nice job, Jenny. Jenny. College. You yeah. want to hold them up? You hold them. The crappie and walleyes. Oh, that's a dandy. God. Oh, nice crappie. Whoa. <laughs> you're almost. That's you're almost the only a, bad part. You were almost about a, the, look at how that. You know, it's one thing about crappies. Oh they have my, such a paper oh my lips gosh. to them. Look at that. One little shake. Boop, he would have been off. Nice job, Johnny. <laughs> and he got in the tree again. Yeah, the tree. Hey, <laughs> who cares if he gets the tree? He got the fish. Where'd Johnny you get that Del, right here? Johnny from? Del Fuego. Ooh, here we go. Oh, oh, oh. You know what I said? I said when you get to the when you get down there and all of a sudden you start catching rock bass, it's time to move on to the next spot. That one? Whoa, I didn't even set in. What do you got? Whoa, 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 that's a beastie. Hold that one up to the camera. Look at the size of that one. That is a big fish. That one is a little bit too big. Let's let that one go. Put it on the board. Nice job, Jenny. Finally, Schneider's off. Aye. For you, Katie. Oh, jeez. Wind him up, Johnny. Johnny, get out of one. <laughs> Look at the size of that fish right there. <laughs> That is absolutely, that is a very nice crappie. Now that's like a borderline as far as keeping or letting them go, and I think we'll let that one go. We've caught quite a few already. Oh, here we go. <laughs> My turn. <laughs> you know what? I got this one off the back of the boat this time, you guys. And that was on a, on a minnow. Cut it up, Johnny. Yep, suspended fish for sure. What do you got there? Holy cats. Rock. Oh, 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 that's a dandy. Ooh, get him up, squeeze. Woo. Hold that one up. That is a nice fish. Get him up, Scout. Take him off, Johnny. What? Uh oh. He's really getting down. Chicks will dig him, fish will fear him. Here we go, you guys. Gotta love it. Beautiful day, good company, catching crappies on the Wolf River. Again, you know, the key to all this fish in these spots is again to find the deeper water. Anything that is over six foot, six to 12 is usually pretty standard. You know, start working the first uh, two feet top, two feet of the water column, and then work your way down. And like I always say, once you start catching rock bass, it's time to move to the next spot. <laughs> Boys! Another, oh, another crappie! I am the crappie meister right now. That is a nice fish. Now that, look at that. That's a happy young man, right? That's why chicks dig them. Oh, 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 they're here. They're there. I tell they're you. They're even in our underwear. <laughs> Whoa. When you're 90, you can say all the things that you want to say. That's right. <laughs> That's a great part about being 90 this year, huh? 91. 91? Yeah. Holy cow. Look at him. I hope when I am that age, I am half that good looking and half that agile. Look at it. Oh, there we go. You know, I went back to the Kalins and, uh, you know, crappie fishing, a lot of people don't understand the crappies, the walleyes, they migrate back into the, into the 
river in the fall like this. And most of the time these fish are coming back in, especially the crappies, they come back in because what happens is the shiners, the emerald shiners, they actually come back into the river in the fall and spawn up along the rocks right here. And that's what drives the crappies back in here. Uh, most of these crappies don't spawn in the river they, and they don't winter in the river. They'll actually go back out into the lake once the shiners move their work their way back out. So that the, that's what really triggers the migration of crappies. It usually starts in about August and they're up here till about the end of October. Then most of them migrate back down. What triggers the walleyes to come up into the river, of course, that you know, it helps when you got a lot of forage up here like the shiners, but current is everything that brings the walleyes up in here, and it's kind of like a false run. Some of the best time frame for fish and walleyes in the wolf, of course, is no normally right around the first week of November, and again, it can happen earlier, and it can be a heavier run. It all depends on the amount of current, current that really draws these fish into this river here. So. He is the big fish fisherman for sure. Yeah, That's what I'm doing wrong. That's a catching all the fish. You don't have the touch. I don't. How much do you owe him though? Uh, College exactly. tuition? <laughs> First year is paid for. It. Oh, nice fish. Oh my. That's a keeper. <laughs> you know what? Like always, we had an absolutely great time, Doc. Thanks, Johnny and Johnny. Thank you very, very much for the day. Fishing, fishing you know, demonstration by you. What do you have to say, Johnny? Anything? Anything? Not too much. No, you're not going to say much? Nope. Hmm. Good day. You know what's funny? When the camera's on, he clams right up. <laughs> like I always say, it's a great day to be alive, isn't it, Doc? Well, what we got to do is get a couple of cheerleaders out here. A couple of cheerleaders? Whoa. That'd be interesting. I want you to go to work. You know, I'm just going to tell you this. I remember not too long ago, maybe a month and a half ago, when the weather was really nice out, there was a beautiful girl that came by in a bikini in a boat, and I was watching him, and his smile just got bigger and bigger as the closer she got. You know what? I said, that's a young man right after me, for sure. Did she make a U-turn? <laughs> he tried to get me to make a U-turn, though. <laughs> hey, for Larry Smith Outdoors, just remember, it's a great day to be alive. All right. <laughs> Good thing there's no high-line wires I got to worry about get, trying to get shocked. Okay, maybe I'm getting a little soft in my old age, you know what? I don't want anybody to know that though. I'm gonna grab another jacket. Dad, what are you doing? Hey, it was a tough day today fishing on Lake Winnebago, but I can't think of a better way to wind down and relax and sharpen my skills than reading the Badger Sportsman. It's a far from working experience.